Hello and welcome to this video. I spent the last couple weeks building, testing, and revising this CNC machine you hear, see before you to carve woods and hopefully metal. I'll take you through the design in CAD, the mechanical build, and the software to explain how it works and provide a resource if someone is interested in creating this CNC machine or any other CNC machine. Also, one note before I start, this CNC machine design was heavily inspired from uh, Nick Adam Bartnick, who's another YouTube creator. Although I used Onshape to design my own parts, uh, they were heavily uh, based off of his original parts, and I knew very little about CNC machining when I started this project, so it never would have been possible without his videos as a resource. So without further ado, here's the Chronicles of the CNC Machine. So it starts off pretty simple. I use these wooden square rods to make the frame of the base. I just took those dimensions, cut them to size, and then sanded them down. They didn't feel particularly nice at the start, but once they were cut and sanded down, they came out pretty well. I made a square or a rectangle frame using four of them, and then used the two others to make supports in the center. It really doesn't matter what you use for the frame as long as it's strong enough to hold the thing together. Um, aluminum profiles or metal would have made it a little stronger, but I don't have the necessary tools and that would have also been more expensive. Also, support material on the 3D print. Uh, you will need to change the, all the parts when you print them if you are going to use a different material for the base. I didn't want to be cutting right on the support wood, so I added a wooden table over the top of the table over the top. My script actually says that. I wanted this one to look nice, so I spray painted it black to fit in with the rest of the CNC machine, and then put my beautiful Jacob Builds logo in bright green spray paint right in the middle. Credit goes to Sawyer for that. As you may have noticed, the sides of the table in corner have small squares cut out of them, two inches by two inches to be exact, and that is so I can mount the pieces, the 3D printed pieces, that are going to hold the lead screws and the step motors and the bearings. I wanted to attach those directly to the support pieces of wood, not the table, so they can be at the correct height. So, this is about as far as I can get into the build without really explaining how a CNC machine works. So that's what I'll do next. Basically, the axis of the CNC machine will be driven by what is called a stepper motor. They, or servo motors, are usually the types of motors used in CNC machines because of how accurately they can be positioned. Servo motors achieve that with a constant position feedback, while stepper motors use coil phases to achieve highly precise steps. I'm using stepper motors for this because they are cheaper and there's more open source code and applications for stepper motor CNC machining. The stepper motors will be used to turn lead screws. Lead screws work turning the rotational motion in the stepper motor into linear motion for each axis. They were kind of like nuts and bolts. As you rotate the nut or bolt, the nut will move down it. The lead screw just has to have a higher pitch. Also, the pitch was so high that it could do this. The electronics will also go into more detail too later. But for now, the highlights are you need your Arduino, a CNC shield, and stepper drivers. So now we're into software, and it's going to get a little more technical here. The part starts out in a CAD program. The one I use in Onshape is Onshape, but any CAD program will work. They're all pretty much the same. You can use other types of files for different types of cuts. For example, an SVG file, which is basically just a 2D file, also works. I did a few drawings with those. Then you use what is called a CAM software to turn the file into G-code. The SVG files I machined used, were draw, used to draw were converted to G-code using JS cuts, although there are other softwares for this. The G-code is basically the instructions for each axis of stepper motor. It tells the stepper motor exactly what to do to make your part and can be tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of lines long. But this G-code is just lines with instructions on it and won't actually move the stepper motors. This is where the Arduino comes in. The Arduino has something called Gerbil installed in it, and that allows it to convert this G-code to physical movement at the stepper motor. The Arduino uses a CNC shield to correctly distribute the power and move the stepper motors. This may seem complicated now, but it gets easier when you're actually working with it. I will also try and include the most specific instructions on how to convert files correctly and where to install what. So the first thing I want to note is that this is my second attempt at building a CNC machine. The first one, all the parts were made out of wood, and it was too imprecise to work. The second one is using 3D printed parts as to be more precise. Now if you don't have a 3D printer at home, you can still build this. 
wooden metal will work for the project. The reason I couldn't use wooden parts was because I'm a bad woodworker. Somebody with better tools and more experience could probably create parts precise enough to be used on the machine. But if you do have access to a 3D printer, I would definitely recommend that. So now we're on to the first part. Remember that the two inch by two inch square I talked about earlier? This is where the first parts are gonna go. Each corner is composed of two parts, one part with holes for all the mounting and a spacer slash support part. Here's the mounting part. As you can see, it has a large hole for a stepper motor, then four mounting holes for standard M3 bolts. Above it, there's a 5 16 inch hole with a cut into it that will hold and clamp the 5 16 inch metal guiding rod I will install. Lastly, there are two holes for M3 bolts that will mount it to the spacer part. And speaking of the spacer part, I will explain that. Spacer part is also 2 inches by 2 inches and spaces the other part so it is level with the table. There's a small leg that extends downward to touch the ground and provide extra support. These are bolted together through the holes I talked about earlier. Lastly, the two combined parts are fastened down to the wood with some random screws that I found. For now, we're going to hold off on attaching the stepper motor and rod. Then I repeated that on all the other sides so there are two identical stepper motor mounts on each corner of a short side. So now we have one side done, but what about the other? The other side is meant to hold a bearing and fasten the rod. That side connects to the spacer the same way that the first one does. The bearing that I'll be using is a 608ZZ bearing with an internal diameter of 8mm, making it perfect for the T8 lead screws that I'm using. The A and the T8 refers to the size, which is 8mm. Uh, the fit is very tight between the bearing and the 3D printed case, so it will need to be press fit with a vise. But now it's time to include the stepper motor on the other side. So I also, you also have to press fit the coupler to the NEMA 17 stepper motor. Really, other types of stepper motors are fine, but I would recommend NEMA 17. It's kind of the right size for this caliber of CNC machine. So yeah, press fit that on. And I would put it through the stepper mount, but I wouldn't put on any bolts yet. Because you still want to put it in the lead screw. So lead screw, put in through the other side bearing. And then line up with the coupler and hammer it in. Um, don't add any of the fastening bolts yet because you might want to remove stuff based on how you're going to insert all the rest of the stuff yet. Now for the next big 3D printed part. This is going to be the part that moves linearly down the y-axis and contain the stepper motor, bearing, and guiding rail for the x-axis. Note that the y-axis guiding rail will be installed when we install this part. This 3D print took forever, lasting about eight and a half hours. Just wait though, there's a 12 hour 3D print coming up soon. Once again, use M3 bolts to secure the brass nut to the part. Depending on how well you print, the print went, you might be able to press the nut into the hole with your hand, or you might have to use a vise. Now we can thread it onto the lead screw. Just pull back the stepper motor and spin it. After that, add one of the guiding rods. These are just metal 5 16th inch rods I picked up at Menards. Really, any size within reason will work. I would recommend buying rods specifically for CNC machines and 3D printers, because they come in sizes that you can buy linear bearings for. I would really recommend linear bearings being used in this project. I'm not because they're more expensive and really hard to get in a reasonable amount of time. But don't be like me. Buy nice rods and linear bearings. Anyhow, part of this is just all common sense. Put the guiding rod through the part and into both clamps. Then insert the lead screw back into the bearing. It probably shouldn't have taken me this long to explain this part, but so it is. Now you may be thinking, what about the other side? The part for the other side is pretty much the same as far as installation goes and it, how it actually is. But instead of a spot for the stepper motor, there's a spot for another 608ZZ bearing. This will attach to the wax of the CNC machine the same way. And the last step is to spin the two sides until they are parallel with each other. So when you add the axis coming in between the two, it's as straight as possible. So before we start on the x-axis, we're going to want to print the z-axis carriage. This is going to be the largest 3D print in the entire build. This part's job is to move linearly along the x-axis and hold the bearings and stepper motor for the z-axis. This is the only part that holds both the bearing and the motor on the same part, which is what makes it so big. Once that prints, add the brass nut and screw it onto the lead screw. Just like the y-axis, press fit the coupler onto the stepper motor, hammer in the lead screw, then insert the guiding rods. Now the two axes are done. I would recommend giving everything a, so far a spin to make sure it works. And finally, onto the z-axis. This will include the last necessary 3D print. Print or build the Z-axis carriage. This will hold the Dremel by using the nut built into the Dremel as a clamp. We will add extra support for the harder cuts later. Put a bearing into the bottom side of the Z-axis carriage we installed earlier and carefully hammer it in. Then cut the Z-axis lead screw to length. I forgot this earlier, but you probably need to, an angle grinder or a chop saw to cut the lead screw. 
If you do not have either of them, then try to buy them as close to the correct size as possible when you order them. Once again, thread the lead screw on the, uh, on the brass nut. Press with the coupler, hammer in the lead screw, and insert the guiding rods. Now, retest if everything works, and if so, bolt all the stepper motors into their respective places. If you feel ver varying degrees of resistance when you spin the lead screws, then your coupler is probably misaligned. That can be fixed with enough gentle hammer taps where there's the most resistance. And now it's time to add any fastening bolts to the couplers. And then, finally, add the Dremel by twisting off the plastic nut, inserting it through the hole, and then tightening it back on. I would also then recommend testing how rigid your mechanism is by uh, moving the end part. And then, if anything needs to be adjusted, then just adjust it now.